to do it. Time Warner, Comcast is running. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tell us how to reset the clock. There we go. She said all it's going to do is raise the price. Good evening, and welcome to the March 10th meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Please stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and justice for all. I'd ask that you all remain standing for a moment of silence for former selectman Cliff Pratt. Thank you. <laughs> Just like to um, say a few words, remembrances of um, Cliff and his, his history um, in Hampton. Um, Cliff was a Hampton native whose family, I believe, has been in town for generations. Matter of fact, there was something in the newspaper that said 11 generations, which is kind of impressive. He served the town with tenures on the planning board, board of selectmen, chairing both boards at one time or another, and serving as school district moderator. He played a vital part in the town's purchase of the development rights preservation of the herd farm. He was also key in the town's effort to preserve barns and other historic structures throughout Hampton. To that end, he most recently and for some time had been tirelessly working towards the restoration and placement of the town clock. He was the chef at the annual pig roast and head judge at the seafood festival <laughs> for many years. The results of efforts will remain with the town for decades to come, and I'd like to um, thank former selectman Jim Workin, Workin for putting some of this oh, together. Great, so. yeah. um, I'd like to start the agenda, first item of the public comment period. Would somebody from the public wish to comment? <coughs> Yes. Yep. <coughs> and if you could just state your name and address. Yes. Uh, my name is David Drolet, uh, 34 Stowcroft Drive in Hampton. I will just, uh, I think there's quite a few people here who aren't familiar faces. So I just want to mention to you, we, we've got a somewhat flexible but five minute limit on uh, okay. public comments. So thanks. Okay. Um, we're here to uh, discuss or raise the issue on the uh, proposed subdivision of Dalton Woods. Um, we have quite a few people from the Stowcroft, uh, Fieldstone Circle, and Westridge Circle that are here. Uh, we are very concerned about the proposal for that subdivision. Uh, we are specifically concerned about the environmental issues. Hello. We are specifically concerned about the environmental issues, particularly the wetlands uh, that are uh, encompassing the whole three streets in that area. Uh, there are many of us that have water problems already. The proposed subdivision uh, proposes to move a little pond and build the road through that area, and we're very concerned about that. We're also concerned about the traffic and the ultimate decision on the access and egress. Uh, presently, there's a town um, a circle, if you will, and the proposal is to either circumvent it and to open up the back woods. So uh, that's my concern and a number of people that are here with me. Okay. Okay. Uh, lastly is we were wondering why would we give a road a name if, uh, there's, if there's not even a, an approval or permitting yet for the subdivision. Okay. Um, one thing I'll, I'll just make you aware of, it, it is our policy on public comment that it is not an interactive you know, type process or whatever, so we're basically just here to listen at this sure. point. Having said that, one thing that we do often do is at the end of public comment, if there's something that a selectman or Fred or was it, whatever is able to clarify, we, we may do that. So Great. Okay? Okay. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Somebody else from the public? Arthur? <laughs> Art Moody, 3 Thompson Road. I first would like to mention the fact that since the selectmen are in charge of the <laughs> annual town report, that uh, I was kind of upset to see that the <coughs> 375th annual town report was continued, was re duplicated from last year's. <coughs> you doubled, you used the same number as last year's. It's been 170 years since we've had printed town reports. 
and they've all generally been numbered consecutively with one aberration when we change fis fiscal years. And the second town report that year was for 11 months instead of 12. But I would suggest that next year you don't go to 376, you go to 377. There'll be two years in there with 375 on them. And that's the one document that the state requires the town to keep a hard copy of in the archives. The next matter I have is about the road names that you have chosen or somebody has chosen to possibly use in the Stowcroft area subdivision, Colcord and Richardson. Richardson can't be found in <coughs> the one volume of Dow's history published 250 years after the beginning of the town as a family geneal uh, genealogical mm -hmm. uh, entry in that one volume. That's volume two of Dow's History of Hampton, published in 1893. There is a Richardson that was in a battle in Maine with the Indians, 1677. He was under the, contr under the control of a captain from Hampton, but that captain also had other Englishmen and 200 friendly Indians. Uh, he was killed up there. The other one, Colcord, uh, was a civilian. Uh, the same year, a couple of weeks before, at June 1677, and he was up near Greenland, which was still Hampton and not ha Northampton time. He, was, he and three others were killed by the Indians. There's no indication that he had a military rank. Uh, it was, a, as, as the Indians did, they attacked settlements uh, secretly. Uh, and uh, I can't imagine you naming a road with a, for a veteran that doesn't have a rank. All the other ones we've named are ranks. Even the Merchant Marine had a rank. So I would suggest, since that was back when we were subjects of the British Crown, and it was not the United States of America, and in fact there was three years in there that we had the Commonwealth in England, Oliver Cromwell, and he murdered the Irish and the Scots that tried to rebel against English. <coughs> I would suggest that we name things after the revolution. And there are two names that haven't been put on streets. Civil War, James Fair, killed in action, 16, 1862, <coughs> private. And uh, James Fair Drive, sounds good. Uh, and there was a uh, Navy guy, Chief Bo Boson's mate, who Spent a couple of years at Hampton Academy in high school, joined the Navy, helped the invasion at, uh, uh, of Mexico in 1914, our excursion there, landed the Marines. <coughs> and uh, two years later in, in 1916, a year before <coughs> we ended World War I, his boat, his tender was swamped off Santa Domingo in the Caribbean and he, they perished. It was hurricane-driven seas, USS Memphis he was assigned to. Other than that, <coughs> perhaps you could get into the civic area. Civic and school leaders the last century, the last half of the 1900s, that, were, that stood out in their leadership and selfish uh, uh, volunteering for the town or the school district. Uh, it makes a lot more sense, I think, to bring it closer, at least to the 20th century. By the way, the name of that uh, sailor was <coughs> Ashton Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y. And uh, we don't have a Lindsay Lane yet. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Anyone else from the public? Ma'am? Hello, Louise Drolette. 
P R O L E T. Um, I just re this is about Stowcroft in Dalton Woods. Um, I know that the, the about naming the streets. Um, I don't know why you're going to name streets. Uh, we're not on the understanding that this project is completely going through and is finalized. Um, along with that, um, just so you know, except for about two people in this audience, they are all here uh, for Stowcroft, Stowcroft, Westridge, and Fieldstone, and there are many more that just cannot attend tonight. Um, clearly, the homes we presently live in were apparently, or we're assuming, were built on wetlands someplace, somehow. Um, many people have not just one sub pump, but two and three to prevent water in their basement. Um, on February 22nd, the Conservation Committee, I had gone to two meetings and they were doing a walkthrough of the property, um, which I don't really know what they could have done in two feet of snow. Um, I asked if they could come back in April and review this and really consider what is already going on disastrously for many homeowners um, who are afraid to, you know, have more water damage that's going to cost everyone a lot more money and why wasn't this done? Um, probably not explaining myself right. The, I, don't, I really don't know what to call it, but when they um, dig for the samples for the wetland, they did it in the frozen ground and so I don't know what the Conservation Committee was looking at just walking around the field what they could see in frozen ground. So all this work where you know, the map and the wetlands was all done in frozen ground. I, I sat there and watched them. So I, that I don't understand. I'm not an engineer, but to me it would make more sense in April or May when water is flowing and nothing is, is frozen uh, for everyone to have a better look at it. But there are many, many concerned neighbors. Um, it's also our understanding that there will be some blasting, ledge blasting um, in that area. And you know, we're all going to be affected. The bottom line is we are all going to be affected. And before this project grows through, we, and I think many of us hope that you, you think of the present taxpayers who are now living there with many problems of water, um, and, and some of them have like swamp backyards as it is. So leveling this ground is not going to make happy people for the town of Hampton. Okay. Thank you very much. Someone else from the public? Okay. Oh, sorry. Hi, my name is Judy Clarkin. Right. I am one of the many representatives from our neighborhood, Stowcroft Road, Fieldstone Circle, and West Ridge Drive. Thirty of us met the other evening to discuss our opposition to the proposed Stowcroft Dalton Woods housing project involving 13 housing units on the 12 acres which include wetlands at the end of Stowcroft Road and adjacent to Fieldstone Circle. It was an amazing response to a perceived threat to our neighborhood. Our area has water issues which we are dealing with individually. Some residents have more than one sump pump. There are several areas of standing water in the yards and high water tables. We fear further flooding of the surrounding properties and other negative consequences resulting in decline of property values as a result of proposed massive construction. Ultimately, no one is to be held um, responsible for these consequences. Many DES and town exemptions are being considered for the engineers and builders. The concerns of the residents need to be taken seriously and responded to because we intend to pursue our issues vigorously. I for one don't care what you name the streets as I feel this issue is premature. Thank you. Thank you very much. Someone else from the public. Okay, seeing none to the board before. Um, on to the end item. Um, Fred, could you just for the benefit of the audience, just sure. go over a little bit the relative um, authority, jurisdiction, responsibilities of the, the Board of Selectmen versus the Planning Board mm -hmm. in relation to some of the issues that, that are coming up here? I can do that, Mr. Chairman. Um, the reason this is on the agenda for the Selectmen tonight is because there's a requirement in the subdivision regulations of the Planning Board that before an application is complete and before it's submitted, the applicant has to come to the, the Board of Selectmen to name the streets that they're proposing to build. Yeah, the application isn't complete unless that happens, and so they need to do that. 
what the selectmen are doing tonight is simply going to try to find some names for these streets and and the applicant is going to try to present what he thinks they should be it doesn't mean they're going to get built I don't want to I want to tell you that this needs to be filed with the Planning Board my understanding is that there will be a continuation of the site review I believe it's uh, the plan review committee is meeting on this on the 26th of March if, if my information is correct <coughs> and um, that will set up a scenario where I believe it's the 7th of May that this subdivision will go before the planning board to begin consideration so you're, you really you really need to if you're going to discuss it the planning board is the one that approves this and not the selectmen they're simply here for the naming of the street and there's also a question of a hydrant and whether or not that will be paid for out of the town's tax appropriation if the street is built and they need to come and, and, and answer those or ask for that tonight try to get that done um, but it does not mean the subdivision is approved or in fact the selectmen are trying to approve it because they're not so it, it, in, in terms of public or whatever it sounds like the first critical date going forward is a May 7th planning board meeting it is sir from March 20th I believe the public can sit in on the PRC right. yes they, they can. can't comment right but at the uh, March 26th which is the last Wednesday in March uh, the planning review committee meetings are generally about two o'clock in this room That's I'm not correct. sure what the scheduling will be and you can go and listen um, you can't participate but you certainly can track what's going on and, and there, there's a benefit to that in that even though you can only listen at the March 26 PRC meeting it makes you more informed in terms of what you might have to say mm -hmm. on May 7th are you saying that at two o'clock in the afternoon yes here? It's not right down yeah. here. Okay, right here. Okay, thank you very much, Fred. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, announcements and community calendar. Mike? Uh, yes, I uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you, everybody in this room knows, and uh, everybody else in town, I hope, knows, tomorrow's election day, and there's a lot of things on the ballot that can definitely change the direction of this town. If you like what you've had before, consider that. If you don't, consider that. So please get out and vote. If you don't get out and vote, only you have yourself to blame if it doesn't go the way you like it. So please get out and vote. Bill? Yes, it'll be my distinct pleasure to spend about nine hours tomorrow with the voting polls. Um, <laughs> there, there are three that sit before me that um, are adults of questionable judgment. They <laughs> re-election to the uh, Puzzle Palace. And uh, uh, it has been... Uh, an interesting year and those that step forward that uh, seek to uh, serve their community are, are to be thanked. And it, is, uh, it is fun to see everybody involved in the election process. Um, Selectman Wolsey will be relieving me from my post of duty tomorrow <laughs> upon her long day at work. So Mary Louise, I'll see you tomorrow and uh, good luck tomorrow with people. Thank you. I found your reference to the <laughs> Puzzle Palace interesting given <laughs> one of our agenda items on the monitoring and <coughs> intercepting of information <laughs> <laughs> Mike I guess I just say tomorrow's the day for the town and the people who are in the town to vote it's their money and it's their choice that's it Mary Louise 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Winnicott High School uh, the voting hours um, I want to make one plea for a positive vote for Article 26, <coughs> which is the article which would give authority to levy fees uh, under 149I. We are seeing the tip of a really big building boom in this town. A lot of the beach is going to be reconstructed. A lot of old structures are going to go. You're, seeing, you're going to see multi uh, family housing, many, many uh, dwellings, larger dwellings, condominiums, apartments, etc. And I truly um, ask for your support for Article 26 because we want to be able to levy buy in fees on the developers who are putting these buildings up to buy into our sewer and wastewater treatment plant. We have to get some help. Once the buildings are built, then they will go on the tax base like everyone else but the developers are having a big impact on this community more so the bigger the buildings get 
and we want to try to uh, have that uh, extra fee uh, available so that we can derive some more tax revenue uh, from from the developers to offset our taxes so we can do more with the uh, with the sewer treatment plant and keep it going longer so I'll appreciate your your consideration and your vote on article 26 um, I accompanied Eddie one of the meals on wheels drivers on his route last Friday and I'm really impressed with the organization I've done this once mm. before and I'd like to give the organization a little bit of a plug um, Rockingham Meals on Wheels has been around since 1978, delivering hundreds of thousands of meals, providing safety checks, support services, and senior rides. The agency's mission is to provide nutritious meals and beneficial support <coughs> services to older and disabled residents <coughs> of Rockingham County who need assistance to help them preserve long-term health, well-being, and independence. In Hampton, they work out of the United Methodist Church and served over 19,000 meals <coughs> last year to Hampton residents. They're one of the charities listed on Article 20 on this year's ballot and will receive a little over $5,000 if Article 20 is approved by the voters. Um, if you may think you may have a, a need or an interest in what they provide, they can be reached at 679-2201 or on the web at rnmow.org. Thank you. Um, first item on the agenda. Uh, Hampton Core Group and the Hampshire Coalition to abolish the death, death penalty. Um, we received um, a email today, and this um, particular appointment has been canceled. I don't know if you want to elaborate on any of the details. Uh, Mr. Well, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, the, uh, <coughs> these folks are meeting with uh, the Chief of Police and Lieutenant Gidley from the Police Department. Uh, they'll be meeting with them on Friday. They expect that the uh, chief has already said that uh, this will be a safely conducted operation uh, as far as the, the walking is concerned, and the, we call it a parade, but it's, it's a walking event for most folks that are involved here uh, on the Mon Monday, March 10th. Um, and, and so they're not going to be able to be here tonight, the 10th, um, but they are meeting with the chief, and things are expected to go well for their activity on um, March 23rd, which is a Sunday in the afternoon so with that I I think the chief has it well in hand and it's anticipated yeah. that this will be on next Monday's mm -hmm. agenda for approval uh, correct okay um, did we uh, want to talk about that now or you want to talk about next Monday next Monday okay um, we don't have the application at this point um, next well, I thought it was on the consent agenda for today there, there have been some changes and it's rather dynamic okay okay um, Next item on the agenda, Jones and Beach proposed subdivision of the Dalton Woodsoft Stowcroft. A couple of items, approval of names and a request for acceptance by the town to pay the fees for the fire hydrant. Good evening, Councillor. Good evening, uh, Members of the board, uh, Steve Ells appearing on behalf of uh, Green and Company, and with me, of course, is Joe Cornardi of Jones and Beach. I'm going to let uh, Joe make the presentation, which is, as the uh, town manager suggested, is kind of a precursor to uh, what's, what will be coming at the planning board. Yes, um, we recently attended a PRC meeting, uh, actually a couple months ago now. Um, and it was brought to our attention that we have to uh, come in for a street naming acceptance from the board. Um, so we've applied with the street naming application and we, um, we worked out with the, um, the town manager's office some of the accepted names. We were provided a list of about four names um, that were options. Um, First one was Brian Litchfield from the fire department. We've we've used that name, I believe, on a subdivision off of Juniper already. So that one's been uh, used. So we were down to four options. They were the uh, James Fair, Edward Colcord, Benjamin Hilliard. I guess there was five. Uh, Lieutenant Richardson and Captain Benjamin S uh, Sweat. Um, so we've picked two of the names. Uh, we picked Colcord Path and Richardson Drive um, from the list. Um, and we're just here for your comments or uh, 
hopefully acceptance. Okay. Uh, questions or comments from the board? Well, uh, after what Arthur said, I think we might want to regroup on that suggested list, right, Fred? Nobody likes all the names. Right. Uh, <laughs> however, they have to fit the 911 call ratios. Yeah. So some of the names that we have, uh, we have more names than this, but some of the names are rejected because they were too close to the names of other streets. Okay, no problem. Uh, we, we've literally, without going outside war veterans, we've literally, yeah. or those killed in combat with the Indians or whatever, uh, <laughs> we've literally <laughs> gone to the end of our veteran lists, uh -huh. so-called. Call court is too close to Concord Ave. That's we have one of the street. reasons they rejected it. Yeah. Right. Well, it's not rejected. It's here as a second choice. Yeah, right. it, it is. Chris yeah. Standard indicated yeah. that it had gone through the 911 yeah. Um, yeah. approval. Yeah, they're not, they're not overly joyed with it, but they'll, they'll use it if we have to. So. We already have Richard's Street. <coughs> right. We were also trying to keep the names somewhat short. Some of the suggested names was Lieutenant Richardson <laughs> Drive, but the, well, we thought about the name of the sign right. and having to write that out. You know, a hundred times. Uh. What? Obviously, <laughs> we're 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 way back in history. Yeah. At, at, at this point, what what was the board's reaction to Arthur's comment about considering mm -hmm. civic and school leaders yep. that are are more current, even if more current is 19th century or or, or whatever? Yeah, I agree with Arthur. I think we'll be back to Charlemagne next if we know. But don't didn't he mention two other names? Oh, what a couple of fellows that died. Fair and Lindsay. They're on the list. You got you got those on the list, Fred? Yes, mm -hmm. they're on the list. Those would be good choices. I'd just about clean off the list, right? Caves, fair. Yeah. Lindsay and Far. Ashton, Lindsay. Fair. 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 How do you spell that? F A I R E. Yeah. What is it? F A I R E. I believe. The old. Oh yeah, very old English or something. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, very old. Like Mary Louise, I, I had a favorable reaction to Arthur's suggestion mm -hmm. of, I, yeah. you know, um, more current s civic school leaders or right. whatever. Mm -hmm. They have to get some names from somewhere. Um, let me ask a question in both of, of you guys and, and Fred. So if, if we were to consider other options, obviously somebody would have to go off and do some research that would take a little bit of time and whatever. What does that do to the process? Um, what are the implications of that of the, of, in relation to the process um, that, that they're having to go through? I don't think it disturbs the process because we have quite a bit of lead time here. Uh, they're going back to the Plan Review Committee on the 26th of this month. Mm -hmm. They basically are not going to be before the Planning Board much before the beginning of May. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got plenty of time. Is, is that something that within a then a, a week or two or three that research could be done. And oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it sounds like we have enough. Um, Phil, do you have any comments on that considering? Um, I don't want to disrespect the process or people's judgment that have come forward with these names. I'm, I'm prepared to make a motion to accept uh, um, these names this evening, okay. but Good. I don't want That's to fine. go against. Do, do we have a, a second for that? I would like to, well, before we get to the second, now let's discuss it. I'd love to see, uh, let's use all the military people first that right. we know of before we should Okay, so it would seem that you would want a second Phil's motion. You want to stick with the I, standard? I, I, I motion that we accept the names as presented this evening. Right. Okay, I'll second that. Okay. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Um, I would make a motion <coughs> that we request that the town manager um, go off and, and do some research on alternative mm -hmm. names, taking into consideration civic and school leaders, mm -hmm. and come back to board within a couple or three weeks mm -hmm. or whatever yep. with, with options. I'm not sure timing-wise, do, do you want to run that by Green and Company at the same time as, as your, so that they would have an opportunity to weigh in? Or I'll, I'll talk to uh, the engineers tomorrow and we'll see what, what we can do for time schedule and uh, because we don't want to hold up anything you're doing. Okay, so we'll do that right away, see if we can't get that done and uh, get the response back, hopefully next week. But again, in this particular thing, when you're going back and just randomly pick school leaders and simply it's going to be opinions 
rather than actual record of duty. I think that's a whole different ball game. It is. It is. And I don't think much of that. Okay. Well, I I had a motion. Do we have? Do we get a second on that? Not yet. Do oh, you want, you want to, oh, oh, your motion is, in is line with Arthur's side. Uh, yes, yeah. I'm happy to second that. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. So that okay. motion passes yeah. three two. Okay. So that's the direction um, we'll take, and we'll we'll um, go forward. Okay. Second. Um, item on your list request for acceptance by the town to pay the fees for a fire hydrant yes at the um just turn the plane over for a second at the planning board me or at the prc meeting uh there was discussion about uh, a hydrant for the property for the uh, proposed subdivision uh, there is an existing hydrant at the end of stowcroft drive mm -hmm. right before the cul-de-sac this circle here is yeah. represents the existing cul-de-sac Stowcroft goes this way, Fieldstone Circle comes out here, and it's this loop. Uh, and the radius that the fire department's looking for is within 600 feet of, the, of a hydrant. Uh, so I drew a 600 foot circle around the existing hydrant, and it almost covers um, all of our development. However, when you run along the road, that 600 feet gets longer because it's not a, a straight line from the hydrant out to here. This roads and curves so we've um, we've been required to propose a hydrant that the fire department has requested you know so that all the homes are covered within 600 feet the radius is shown here in this uh, in this pink highlighter um, so all the lots are covered with one hydrant the hydrants located within the right-of-way uh, right at the intersection of the of the proposed roads um, so I guess uh, we're before you tonight for acceptance of the hydrant as a future maintenance for the town, um, similar to all other subdivisions that I know of in town that where the uh, hydrants are paid for by the town with the tax monies you know received from the subdivisions, and um, so that's that's why I guess we're here tonight is for the the board to. Okay. Fred, Fred, could you educate the board on the the timing of this? In other words. I don't believe I've, I've I've been on the board six years. I don't think I've run into this before. So my question is the 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 timing of us accepting the responsibility of of a hydrant this early in the planning process, and quite frankly, prior to um, accepting a road. Mm -hmm. If if this was a a private road, then for example, the town would not be correct. Um, so can, can you kind of cover that a little bit? Well, one of the things that as we started going through the review process of what was going on in subdivisions, we found a number of things that were causing uh, increased appropriations by the town, whether the street lights, um, go back to Barron Drive, for instance, right. uh, yeah. there's an extensive street light system there that has direct burial underground cables. We own all of it. You're, you're talking if it needs to be replaced, you're talking many hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that work. Um, we're concerned with those appropriations and future expenses. So mm -hmm. what we told the, the planning board and we, we discussed it with the, uh, the plan review committee and they agreed that we should be bringing things to the Board of Selectmen that result in an appropriation of funds sometime during the fiscal year to be paid. Mm -hmm. In the case of hydrants, for instance, uh, we currently spend $491,822 a year in hydrant fees. There are 268 of them, and it's $1,835 a year. And as you know, the rates are about to increase again. Right. Um, we're concerned that eight, that $1,835 is not in the budget. It's not there. So, uh, and you have instructed us where an appropriation or an expenditure of funds is not contained within the budget. You want, you want it brought before the selectmen for uh, at least cursory review and perhaps a vote to say whether or not it should in fact be expended without an appropriation. That's what we're doing. And I think you'll see this more often as far as street lights are concerned on, on development roads, uh, hydrants are concerned on development roads, anything that you have to pay for out of the tax rate. Because we think you need to know what it is. Now that has not happened a lot in the past. Uh, but we think it's important because our bills continue to go up, not down. And those expenses are going to continue to increase. We anticipate that uh, next year's hydrant fees will be well over $500,000 a year. So we're conscious of that. We're conscious of your instructions, and we'd like to find out how the board feels about that. Okay. Let me ask you a question. The, you know, given the timing of the 
project, time to develop, and so on and so forth. My, on a practical level, my e immediate reaction is, is that an additional hydrant would not be reflected in, in, in bills received by the town during 2014 from Aquarium. Depends on how fast they build. If that hydrant goes in when the road goes in, it'll be on the second half tax bill. Or the second half bill from, from Aquarium. Okay. If, if it doesn't, it won't. Yeah. But it will reflect next year on next year's appropriation. So, and so if it is a half year, I would assume Aquarium does not charge us a full year for a hydrant that they don't no, put in until be half year. September or, right. or whatever. What, what would the amount of that be then? Uh, half of the 1835. $900. $900. Okay. Second question is that I have is I wonder if, if, if we were to grant approval, if, if that approval should be contingent um, and, and not be effective until such time as, as the road were accepted. I mean, the possibility mm -hmm. exists that, that uh, I'm, I'm not saying it's going to be the case, but the possibility does exist that the road could, could not be accepted. Otherwise, we wouldn't have acceptance as a process right. um, that we go through. That's correct. So I would question the wisdom of, uh, of unless it was contingent yeah. upon, yeah. you know, the selectmen, mm -hmm. you know, whatever down the road right. um, accepting um, the road, and if we tied it to that, we could probably pretty much assure um, or have a pretty good chance of it not impacting 2014. And if all this does go down, you know, it could be something that's, you know, but quite frankly, in terms of $900 on a $500,000 um, hydrant charge or whatever, it probably would fly under the radar even at much time. It might, but we'd have to account for it, and we're, we're conscious of that. Okay. Plus your always if if the you want to put the proposition on that the, that the road has to be a public highway um, mm. I think that may represent something for the developer because if the hydrant goes in then Aquarian is going to commence to charge and that's on a quarterly basis for the development mm -hmm. and that's about double our rate uh, on the on the annual basis so they'd have to begin paying as soon as the hydrant went in mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of why we want to get these things up front so there's no understand misunderstanding about what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Comments right. from board members? Uh, it, there, there are more and more developments being proposed, so I want to be careful about what kind of precedent we set in an area like this. I mean, you, by Fred's admission, things have maybe not been coordinated. Um, in the past, and, and the same approach might not have been used. So I think we want to be on a path of consistency where these developments are concerned. Uh, Mr. Mike, Mike, Bill, comments or? I have a question. Um, you mentioned the buried utilities might be very expensive for us to maintain a while ago. Mm -hmm. Who approves whether they're below ground or up gr uh, above ground, and who ex accepts responsibility for them either way? That's a process that goes through the planning board. It's part right. of the planning process, and there's a statute regulating that. Once utilities are embedded in the the, the infrastructure, mm -hmm. okay. as long as there's no easement for those utilities, the town is free to accept the road as a public highway. If those utilities are placed by easement and the easement's not released, then we don't accept the road because we then become responsible for the maintenance and, mm -hmm. and upkeep of the utilities. Right. as the system goes along. So if we're doing something, let's say we'd have to dig the sewer up and there's an electric underground conduit in, in the way, we have to pay to move that and have electric people stand there and supervise us during that whole operation. Mm -hmm. um, it becomes quite cumbersome. On the other hand, if, it, if the planning board approves an as-built plan for the location of utilities, then it becomes a utility company expense. So we're very conscious about how those things evolve and how they, how they, how they end up in our pocketbook as opposed to the utilities pocketbook. So we, we're careful about that. Is it fair to ask at this point what the power service would be in, in a situation like this? Are they going well, to be? Well, we're talking about hydrants. Like yeah. power well, service. that's utilities, so. I, well, right, I, just I, don't, I think that's don't a tangent with, with the, the, the item before the board here. Is, is underground? The, is, is, is the okay. hydrant. Um, has, has the Fred, has the, the town attorney been in the loop on this? Yes. The timing. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Uh, Mary Louise speaks eloquently about uh, development costs and uh, the shortage of um, 
of funds, quite frankly, to run the town, uh, the corporation that is the town of Hampton. Um, may I ask uh, Attorney Ellis, how big are these homes that are going in? Uh, they'll probably be... Um, how many bedrooms? Probably three, three and a half. Bedrooms. They'll probably be in the four, four to $500,000, consistent I, with the neighborhood. I understand, and, and w without jeopardizing or um, not giving heedance or credence to the, the folks that have come in here earlier that, that will be involved with this planning board process. Um, there are development costs and then there's school costs. And if there's three bedrooms, mm -hmm. um, it's $10,000 um, per kid, per child to go to our school system in town. So that could be thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 per household, could be eight households, could be a quarter million dollars. And I am just at the point, uh, irregardless of precedent, um, irregardless of what we did last year or 10 years ago or 20 years ago, that um, uh, homes that are four or $500,000 that we contribute um, out of taxpayer money, uh, fees for a fire hydrant, it's, it, to me it seems like it's kind of the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. And that's just my opinion and I think it kind of goes along with what Mary Louise says. And then again, there's the uh, folks that, that um, um, uh, aren't too keen on the uh, um, project, and that remains to be seen where it all shakes out, but sure. I, I, uh, I was fine with the names, but I'm not fine with the fire hydrant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I might, Mr. Chairman, um, precedent. The town has always done this. The town doesn't own a water company. Right. I listen to this board for years, not the individual members, but this board talk about the importance of providing essential services to the taxpayers. Fire and police, I can't think of anything more essential. Uh, I virtually am not aware of any subdivision in town where you haven't uh, accepted this responsibility. And I, know, I appreciate you trying to watch the taxpayer's money. I have property. I have to pay a tax bill in town. <coughs> but if you treat this group of this 13 home subdivision differently from everybody else, I can almost assure you there'll be a request for an abatement. They're not going to receive what the folks on Stowcroft have or Fieldstone Circle or everyone else in town. Uh, we're talking about relatively small amounts of money, but uh, this is this is a pretty essential service. Uh, fire, we have great fire department, but they're not that good without a hydra. They need a, the tools. and. Uh, <coughs> for 13 homes to provide fire protection, which is something that the town has always done, and I, I would put that in the category of really important essential services. Uh, I, I think the underground utilities issue, that could get expensive, but that's really not what we're talking about right. here. We're talking about peace of iron above ground. Uh, and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just surprised that it's an issue. I appreciate you're all concerned about the tax, uh, levels, and I, I appreciate that because I'm a taxpayer, as I said. But this is, there's got to be some services that you provide, and this seems to me an absolute threshold item uh, at a fairly uh, reasonable cost. Um, the town voted uh, 100 years ago not to buy the water company. So this is how you provide uh, uh, service. You, you pay for the, the rental of the hydrants. So we're just asking you to do what the town has always done, provide an essential basic service. Uh, there, will be, there will be tax revenues from the homes. Uh, who knows about the number of school kids? Uh, that's an issue, but if you look at the demographics, Hampton is becoming a much older town. Uh, it's, it's crazy where the, the average age of the citizens of Hampton uh, are going. Uh, We've done have recently done with some impact fees for planning board matters, and I was I was taken aback by the average age and the projection for the average age. So I don't know how many young families with 2.3 kids are going to be able to afford to go in there and buy the kind of homes that are going to be uh, going to be built. But uh, we're just asking that uh, this this group uh, of homes be treated like everybody else, and uh, we think it's a reasonable request. And again. If you're trying to save taxes, which is laudable, I think the other end of it's going to be a petition for an abatement because the essential services that everybody else receives uh, are going to go wanting here. So. I, um, 
May I, I one, last, one last thing, Mr. Chairman, and, and it goes to, along with our naming of the proposed streets. If we push this back uh, to uh, an agenda item that uh, concurs with the naming of the streets, how does that disrupt the process, if at all, going forward? If we don't make a decision yes. tonight, yes. in other words, we'll push back the street yeah. naming. Yeah. If we push back this decision, address it at the same time. <coughs> yes, we address it at the same time. Thank you. Um, and I don't think I, that would. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to comment. I, I, I tend to agree with your points. It's it's a basic service. It's the fire department that has requested, mm -hmm. um, you know, the hydrant. I don't think that, that that's an area where we want to be not doing it to, to save money. I agree with you that that would not make a lot of sense. On the other hand, um, I have a concern with accepting the responsibility for the hydrant prior to accepting the road. Um, pushing it off will give us an opportunity to consult with the town attorney <coughs> in terms of perhaps some language that basically says we accept it, but you know, contingent on ultimately the acceptance of the road or whatever. Because clearly, we have hydrants in town; they're on private properties like condominium associations, and the town does not pay, mm -hmm. um, you know, for those That's right. hydrants yeah. or whatever. So, yeah. is that um, yeah. acceptable to the board yeah. or whatever? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, we couldn't have. Um, satisfied your requirements tonight a little bit more expeditiously, but we'll um, do our best not to drag our feet as well. Well, I think we have an, uh, an extra week or so, so I don't think that will matter. And yeah, we'd just as soon get it right the first time around. And uh, uh, Joe's, Joe's telling me as long as, uh, what's your submission date for the technical review, folks? We have to, we're resubmitting uh, the 12th, which is in two days. 12th, two days, yeah. And then we'll be on for the 26th. Uh, 26th of March is the PRC meeting itself. Mm -hmm. Well, I think if you just inform the Technical Review Committee that matters are pending before this board, there's really no more we can do. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Great. Thank you for your time. Okay. Approval of February 24th minutes. Page one. Page two. <coughs> page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine. Um, page nine. Um, at the top, it starts off, Chairman Nichols added that he believes this just started, it was not done with the first storm, and also went through the area that is being cleared. There's then a semicolon, and it says, appearance of the beach and how small things make a difference. I think it actually shifted over to Phil that was speaking at that point. Could you repeat that, please? Yeah, sure. If you look, if you look at this top here, see where it says, Chairman Nichols mm -hmm. added that he believes, blah, 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 then it hits a semicolon. Yes. I believe from this point on, that was actually you that was, was, was speaking. So beginning um, with the word appearance on the third line down, that was actually Selectman Bean um, at that point. Page 10, page 11, page 12, page 13. Um, on page 13, the third paragraph down that starts, Selectman Woolsey reiterated, um, I th I'd like to just add um, a few words of clarification. Uh, it says, uh, Selectman Woolsey reiterated a number of times she brought up this exact point of complying with GASB standards at the Budget Committee. There's a semicolon, then it says, very upset that the state has been able to pull out of their responsibilities. I think that was, Mary Louise was referring to the 35% comp contribution to Group right, 2 right. and teachers' NHRS right. costs, right. nothing right. to do with gas Not at that point. Right. Correct. Okay. And page 14. I will make a motion to approve the February 24th minutes as amended. Second. Seconded by Selectman Pluff. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Town Manager's report. Brett? Mr. Chairman, um, I was notified today of a couple of things I'll start off with so I don't forget them. Uh, one, the electric light uh, company is uh, scheduled to begin work tomorrow on the recommended changes to the signal up, up at uh, High and oh. Lafayette. So hopefully within a day or two, oh. that will all be on, on, on 
online. I'm going through there every day. I'm going to be, be able watching. To check. <laughs> It'll probably be much worse just for you, Mary Louise. The other thing is I was notified today that the state of New Hampshire will start on the seawall, their, their seawall tomorrow. Really? They're start assembling material and getting oh, ready to yeah, start the work. So yeah. people see them out there, that's, that's what they're doing. Fred, they're doing from from what street all the way down to the uh, end? I believe. Thir is it 13th? I think it was 14th Street, 14th street. Yeah. to the end. And they're running right to the end of there to where the butts are. See they're the going to run until the first week in June, I believe it is. They're yeah. going to stop and they're going to take it up after Labor Day. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, the, the intent is to go all the way up, Fred, right. to meet our. To the very end. Yeah. To the end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You've already been told uh, tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m as the balloting at Winter Cunard High School in the cafeteria. Just for those who don't know, you are now too late to get an absentee ballot. If you come for the absentee ballot tomorrow, you would be available to go vote. So then you're, you're not going to be able to apply for one. Um, believe it or not, once in a while we have someone who does that. So um, please remember to register your dog before April 30th. Uh, I want to make a note that the legislature appears to be in the mood for increasing the penalties for non-registration. So it probably behooves people. It's already very expensive. If you go to the very end, it could be as much as $100 a dog. Uh, that's crazy when it's like 6 or $7 a dog if you're just going to register in time. So uh, please, please come in and register. We don't want to ha hand you penalties. That's not part of our job. Uh, April 15th is the filing deadline for veterans, elderly, individuals who are 65 and older and receive a property tax bill and disability exemptions. Contact the assessor's office for income and other limits to qualify for the exemptions. It's very important that you get a hold of them. There are certain forms that have to be filled out. Work continues on the Church Street pumping station. The contractor continues to complete individual systems within the station and continues to be on schedule. And they are, they're really moving. It's, it's amazing. Uh, for those of you with political signs up, uh, the town, uh, for the town election, uh, according to the town ordinance, that it be removed within 24 hours after the completion of the election. I think state law re allows a week, but the town town has a regulation that says uh, 24 hours. And two, two, and two, two, and two weeks before, right? Thursday. Pardon? Two weeks before and 24 hours afterwards. That's correct. Yes, yeah. well, we're already up. So, but well, questions. there were some out there were a little early. Yes, right. there were a few questions uh, for Fred. I have a couple. Uh, Fred, have you been Sir. able to establish communication with the State of New Hampshire Parks as far as the uh, MOU? We are actively working on it. Okay, great. Um, whoop, hold it there, gentlemen. <laughs> whoop. Well, you're actively working on it how? Well, the board said that we were to uh, put in the, um, the fees, the schedules for fees. Yeah. And that's the only thing we're doing at the moment, waiting for the town meeting vote tomorrow. Okay. My main concern is that by the time they start bringing crash to the transfer station, we have a, an agreement. Uh, right. We don't need to get into all the details of language. We already did that once, but where they've accepted our seven cents a pound rate. That's, right. That was my name. Any changes okay. legally voted by the board. Right. right. Okay. So this is not negotiations for an overall? No. I would hope after a couple of years of having that that we don't have to beat it to death on something up on the right. There's not much left to beat to death. Right. We've already done that. Um, Fred, there was something in our box related to um, checks that we um, mm -hmm. have received whatever um, from the LGC and the amount of, of 51373 and some allocation of that is, is, is going to show up um, as revenues to the town, some of which is going to go to existing employees and some of which is going to retirees. I have a request that, yes, that um, we assure that we have a very solid paper trail documenting our agreement with the unions and all on this, simply because Mike Schultzer has been the one right. who's been involved with this right along. Mike has announced right. his retirement on May right. 16th, and mm -hmm. if, if there is any sort of, you know, I thought it was this, I thought it was that, it would behoove us to have a, mm -hmm. a solid paper trail. We may already have that, I don't know, but... I believe we do. Mike has been very diligent yeah. in, in documenting right. everything. Right, but if we can just confirm that, that we in fact we'll have know. that... Um, While you're on that, contingent with, uh, with that, um, are we getting clear indications of where we stand with the money that's due the town? I mean, if they're sending us a piece, uh, a little bit, a percentage, what does that represent? Do we know? 
this is the, the, the piece that I just mentioned, which was in our right, box, right. Um, yeah. I believe related to um, 2012. Is that correct? 2011-2012. I'm suspicious of anything that comes out of that outfit. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, one yeah. final yeah. issue, okay. Fred. There was yeah. something Sorry. in our box, and I don't know if you want to touch on it or whatever, relative to the state and getting started on the Taylor River Dam replacement. Anything you want to say on that? Uh, or? I had a very sketchy conversation from the engineer in charge. Um, the information was difficult to come by, shall we say. Uh, they don't, I believe, know exactly what they're doing at this point either, so this is a preliminary throw for them. But they've indicated that they're going to cut the project in half. Uh, they have done some extensive bore testing on both sides of the interstate and down the center line. And they found originally they were going to move the, um, the bridge or the water flow uh, back to where it was in the south end of the pond into, uh, into the uh, uh, estuary going into the end of the harbor. They found they can't do that. The ground is much too soft and along that whole area where the dam is no. to, to support a bridge. Of course, we could have told them that because it's in the middle of a mucky mire, but um, and that's why the road continues to collapse. Yeah. Um, they've decided that they're going to dig an extensive uh, channel or canal, whatever you want to call it, back towards the uh, southbound uh, liquor store. Uh, just to the north of this location and then go underneath the interstate on solid ground <laughs> with a bridge and then dig a, a passage down to, to where the existing exit is from <laughs> the existing <laughs> piping. They've also indicated that they, they plan on replacing the dam sometime in the future. Uh, right. And the first question <laughs> I asked was, what are you going to do about the free flow of water and the contamination behind the dam? Right. And I didn't get an answer. Yeah, well. They don't have one. Uh, they, I, yeah, they, they, he talked something about doing some sheeting and things of that nature. And, and uh, <laughs> since I haven't seen any plans, uh, I question what they're going to do because they're not apparently going to add anything onto the dam. So, so several years ago, um, this came up. And I recall we, we even um, secured outside council, I believe it was Tupper Kinder, okay. if I'm Tupper remembering Kinder, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And, and, um, you know, to be honest with you, this is all very foggy, but there was discussion of an option A and option B and an option C, and I remember you had, you know, some concerns with some of the options. Are, are we going to get an opportunity, um, you know, when plans are available to, to at least weigh in on, on what our thoughts are? Or? My understanding is that they're going to hold an informational meeting. They want to hold that in Hampton Falls, the town hall, <laughs> uh, in the evening. Um, that was a bad yeah. suggestion by them last time. It's going to be a bad suggestion this time as well. Uh, the people in Hampton Falls are not for this, and I know the people on that end of Hampton are not for this either. Uh, we have made them very conscious about the fact that we know that the 77,000 cubic yards of contaminated material behind that dam that could in fact kill the estuary. And we have told them pointedly that we will recommend that the town of Hampton go to court if Good. necessary to federal court Good. in order to stop the program if that material is allowed to be released. Mm. So, so what is the first step for town staff to attend that meeting, listen to what they have to say, and then go from there? Well, we've requested um, plans, obviously. Um, they may or may not be available until the meeting, but we definitely intend to attend the meeting, mm. and we're going to be vocal. Because okay. we have to to protect the community. I have a, an, another question for Fred, if you're all finished. Um, you mentioned something about Mike earlier. Was he in today? Mike Sposer? Huh? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, the reason why I ask is because I was looking over the January report. I had four questions. And uh, being says this might be my last night, I thought I might have him answer before I arrived tonight. It's not your last night. Okay, it's not my last night. That's why uh, we're not officially relieved until they're sworn in, which is a week from tonight, isn't it? Well, but anyway, my, putting... My, my suggestions, give them a call in the morning. Okay. okay. Sometime during the day tomorrow. Okay. Nope, if there are no further questions, Fred, I'd like uh, to move I've on. Got, to I've got just, just one, and it's on. it was also in our box. It's the five-year analysis of building fees, uh, collective uh, yeah. operating yeah. costs. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I just think that's, that, uh, that's a remarkable department. Yeah. And if you look at the fees, and Selectman Wilsey speaks to the fees, yep. and we've heard a little bit about 
development costs today, but um, those, those really are extraordinary revenues, and we run that entire department with uh, really prolific growth, uh, mm -hmm. prolific commercial growth, yep. and it's running us um, 25, 2600 bucks a week for the entire town to do that. And with, You'll with see the town that's got you are where that's on new business. Right. Okay. Got that. Got okay. that. But it, 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 at the same point, it's relevant. It's, it's, yeah, it, yeah, it is yeah. relevant, right. and that is a very, very well run department, and it's it's run on a on uh, the smell of an oil and gas. Yeah. Really is. So uh, congratulations to those people that lead that. Yeah. Okay. You. Old business. Fred, <coughs> West Side Street Sewers Change Order. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I received a request from the Department of Public Works. Uh, this goes back to. Um, the change that was made in the West Side Streets Auburn Avenue extension. Uh, they forgot to account for the fact that uh, they had the engineers supervise the installation. Um, and the cost of that is, is enumerated here in, in the task description. So the fee would go from um, 87350 76 to 89 76 and they, they forgot to account for that for the board. So I was asked to sign for this. Uh, this was a board vote. I said I won't sign for it until such time it goes back to the board for approval because I can't, nor do I intend to even try to undo one of your votes because okay. that's just not the way it should function. If I followed you, it sounded like it was approximately a $2,000. That is correct, sir. Increase to 2150 or whatever. Okay. Um, do you want a motion on that? or? I think we have to because we have a signed contract on okay. it. And, and that motion is to approve the change order, which increases the engineering fees associated with the West Side Streets from, did you say, 87350? 87350. 87350.76 to 89.50.76. And uh, do we have a second on that? I have a question before we get into it. Can we get into a discussion? discussion? Okay, Mike has seconded it. Yeah, Mike. Uh, I didn't see anything in the paper pile about this. Right. You should have. No. Not my pile, not my box. None of us no. got any. Really? There, there was. No. I mean, I understand it. It's it's not complicated, right. but I, I agree that there was nothing in our huh. boxes. Well, well, can you just give us a little bit more detail as to what the deal is again, Fred, for me? When, as you recall, originally we had a vote to do Auburn Avenue extension and, and another street. Okay. And between them is uh, Auburn Avenue extension, excuse me, Auburn Avenue and another street. And between is Auburn Avenue extension. Right. Um, and we were dealing with whether or not we could do that because Auburn Avenue extension is a private way. Right. So right. we voted the other two streets, which are public highways. And uh, town council did uh, a monumental amount of research mm -hmm. and came back with the indication that the pipe is ours mm -hmm. and that we had the right to put it there. So therefore, mm -hmm we can replace it. And we, we did that later in another vote. Uh, what the Public Works Department forgot to do was to give you the added cost for the engineering supervision to put it in and make sure it's correct. So the construction costs themselves were covered Th right. in, in what we approved back then. I presume Space Spofford That's correct. Um, hit us with an additional $2,000 or whatever it is over and above, over That's and above correct. The, what would have been the cost for just um, Auburn and uh, Perkins. Right. Okay. That's I exactly what happened. I understand now. Thank you. So we have a motion by myself, seconded by uh, Selectman Pluff. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Uh, vote is 4 1 with Woolsey opposed. Um, next item IT policy related to the monitoring and <coughs> accepting of information. Mark, would you like to talk to that? He loves talking about that. <laughs> yeah, the board at, uh, last discussed this at its meeting on February 24, and since then I've had the chance to confer with the uh, town manager, the um, IT director, and the uh, police chief concerning possible wording to be added to the um, language that was of concern. The language of concern uh, had to do with a, uh, a blanket statement in the existing policy to the effect that the uh, town manager or his designee reserves the right to monitor, review, audit, intercept, 
access and disclose all messages sent and received except for confidential information under state federal law. Um, and so to add some wording that would uh, address some of the concerns and yet to avoid adding uh, requirements beyond what clearly settled law allows, uh, the thought was to add some qualifiers to the right, one of which is to, uh, to make the exercise, exercise of the right to monitor, etc., consistent with federal and state law. Um, also, uh, to indicate that the town manager or his designee will only exercise this right after careful consideration of the facts and the current law and consultation with legal counsel. I think it's because of the abundance of, of, of possibilities that could be involved here. It's best not to lay down a bright line, we will do it this way or in this case and that way in that case. Uh, as we know, with technology being what it is, uh, the possibilities are endless, really. So the best thing to do is to look on th at things at a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I, I was the one that, that, that brought this up, my concern over um, employees and ultimately the public having communication with them, having some level of privacy. Um, I believe this accomplishes um, what I had asked the, the town manager and the town attorney um, to, to, to accomplish, and um, I would make a motion to approve the change to the policy as outlined um, in the town attorney's um, I'll second for discussion purposes only. Okay, discussion. Um, I was noticing that one of the comments made by the chief, uh, by Chief Sullivan, um, he had some reservations about some of this, and uh, he uh, indicated that, um, I don't have his note here, but... It's on the front page there at the bottom. Okay, right. There it is. Uh, I, his question, one of his questions was, of several remarks he made there, was what if the town manager is involved with this problem? What if? I mean, I'm not saying the town manager would be, but what if? I mean, we can always blame him for, for everything, but we, you know, we might actually catch him this time. But anyway, back to this. W w back to this, though. Um, when it comes to this, what if the, what if the town manager is involved with something that might be marginal? With these rules, it looks like the town manager can say, "Oh, it's okay," and I can keep around trucking. The way you have it written now, your suggestion. It's all Mark's fault. Yep, of course. <laughs> well, the actually, the initial suggestion was that uh, the town manager uh, and the town attorney would would uh, address this. And what the police, I, I had thought, well, let's add the police chief to it because there are law enforcement right. considerations. Right. And so the police chief posed to me the question, well, what if either the police chief or the town <laughs> attorney <laughs> are, are, are uh, suspect? suspect. Yeah. And so what I did was I just added the words consultation with legal counsel, not necessarily with the town attorney. I think we could go through all <laughs> kinds of... I know, combination. We could go through all kinds of, of you know... What ifs. What ifs or, or, or whatever, but I, I think that the most important thing is to that issue that you've raised, we've made progress because there are now two people involved. So I suppose we could worry whether Mark can <laughs> inspiring, but I, I, I think we've made progress in that area. Could I stick my nose in? After reading Mark's memo, I feel that we are in the process of digging <coughs> a hole with our mouths. I think sometimes the fewer words said, the better. Right. The fewer points made, the better. I don't want to get tangled up in any of this stuff. The, the computer system and the technology system belongs to the town of Hampton. We're paying people to manage. We're paying people to supervise. We expect them to use reasonable judgment. And if people are misusing the privilege 
of working with the uh, the public technology, uh, then I would expect management to take uh, appropriate steps. I don't want to touch any of this, to be perfectly blunt with you. Okay. Any further may, discussion? Yeah, if I may, in reference to that, I think one of the points that was brought before, though, as a private citizen, if I'm a private citizen and I email a town employee or a board member, this allows the town or anybody here to beat me up, and I have rights as a private citizen. I'm sorry. Why you can't just beat me up with my email to somebody in town. Why not? Because that's mine. That's not doesn't that property does not belong to the town. Well, if it leaves your if it if it leaves your uh, custody and then goes out into the public forum, I'm not an attorney. I'm not going to go there. And if people are going to be are going to be sending things into that's not an employee problem that's a problem outside I'm exactly sure that's what I'm trying to say here yes. that we should I leave think. that stuff outside outside and stuff inside now we can be okay. we can take pro appropriate action on that but not the people outside I'm sorry oh. okay we should leave well enough alone okay at any rate one Quite comment I would make Mary Louise yes, is the additional language that Mark has suggested um, the town manager or designee will only exercise this right after careful consideration of the facts and current law in consultation with legal counsel applies to the, the, the wording that precedes it, which strictly relates to messages, okay? It doesn't relate to the installation of software or where somebody goes on the web or the use of equipment. It relates to monitor, review, audit, intercept, access, and disclose all messages. What it basically says is that before the town can start accessing employee communication, which could be employee to employee, to employee, could be employee to selectmen, could be employee to the general public or whatever, it simply says that the town manager will consult with the town attorney. I think that is good language. I think it protects us. Um, uh, more and I think it provides employees a little bit more privacy than they would have under under the um, under right, the right. current policy so it, it's it's not a huge change and I think it's something that quite a bit of effort has gone into can we take this to a vote and may, move I, on? may I just speak to the issue Mr. Chairman? I, I, initially I, I um, when this came up I don't know the genesis of this issue I don't know if there was dissatisfaction I didn't have any with the IT policy. I'd never read the IT policy. Uh, I take our employees at face value that they're committed public servants, that they're honorable, that they're integrity based, and they do a really good job. So I want that right out there um, as the uh, cornerstone of uh, our communication process. That includes the cell phones and any communications that they have. And then, secondly, uh, having been a former government employee, and I guess I'm one now. Um, I think <laughs> that anybody can look at my government stuff anytime they want yeah. um, because I serve the town of Hampton. They pay me the $3,000 a year, and I'm an employee, and that's just the way I think. Uh, having said that, I, I, and, and listened a little bit tonight, and listening to you, Mr. Chairman, I think that uh, if you would uh, perhaps include that uh, in that, that party of people, if an incident does arise to the occasion where it, uh, it warrants uh, uh, some inspection of communication, but I think the chairman of the board of selectmen should be included in that. Um, <laughs> I think uh, is is a professional courtesy. The chairman of the board is is the chief director of the town, the town manager, um, the town attorney, and this would oftentimes be a uh, um, a legal issue or a criminal issue perhaps, and the police chief. And you could use the language to include, but not necessarily be all those people. But I think that's a broad enough net. It's, uh, it's a tight group. Uh, it's all leadership. It's department head. It's legal. It's law enforcement. It's town manager, and it's the chair. Those are five people. And if you would, in, if you would incorporate that, then I would support your motion. Okay, let me and suggest. The butcher, the baker, and the candlestick let, let, maker. Let me, let me, uh, let's not go on all night with this. Let me suggest language um, that accomplishes what you suggested and see what Mark's thought. Um, at, at the end of the sentence, the town manager or designee will only exercise this right after careful consideration of the facts and current law 
um, and consultation with legal counsel and something to the effect and will inform the chairman of the board of select. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm strictly, I'm not bringing the chairman of the board of selectmen into the decision making process. I'm simply ha asking that he be informed um, after the town manager and the town attorney have consulted. Does that make <coughs> sense? Does Did that you accomplish? want the chief of police in there too? I well, even the butcher. <laughs> no, I, I, I think, I think uh, oftentimes if you're, if you're going to be doing that, there, there may be a law enforcement issue, and, and I think that's why we have police chiefs. Right. We Mark, are do you paying have any? people to manage. Okay. Um, Mark, do you have any comment on that little addition that I suggested? He studied it. Um, I'd or like to think about that. Yes, yeah, so you think about that till like next to week. About it. I'd like, so I'd, like to I'd like to get this approved um, tonight if possible, or not. If, if I, I'd like to vote. think about that one. We can always... Uh, the can chairman, always the chairman is the point person for a number of items, but I'm not sure you want that on this one. May not want it, you mean? May not want that on this one. Rather than... I mean, we, uh, as a chairman, I might not want it rather than... Well, we don't want it. Well, There's a difference the, the, the oh key God. thing about legal, let me tell you my key thought about consulting with legal counsel, and that's not necessarily me. Okay. It, it's that uh, depending on the situation, you'll, you, you'll end up flagging an issue and then t going on to consult with others. And I think you have to count on legal counsel to identify who those others would be. Okay. In other words, if it's, if it's intercepting certain type of communications I would say well let's talk to the chief of police first um, it, it's just hard to anticipate in advance who you might want to refer it to but whoever legal counsel is you got to count on that person to flag them for you so I, 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 I hesitate Mark to had said he'd he'd like to think about it um, Bill I understand your point would it be acceptable to you if if we approve it as it is submitted by the town attorney but ask that he get back to us perhaps with an amendment in the area that you discussed? Sure. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? I call Mot it death by a thousand words. Mo motion passes 3-2 with um, Woolsey and Pluff opposed. Good. We got through that. <laughs> Traffic ordinance, parking restrictions, Route 1A, High Street to Church yeah, Street. Good. We received a, a document um, in our box. Fred, would you like to speak to that? Uh, basically, Mr. Chairman, we took your vote um, and tried to translate that into what appeared to be two different parking areas mm -hmm. and two different restrictions on two different areas. Yeah. Um, I guess my, qu my question <laughs> would be, do you really want to uh, have a loading unloading zone in the first area. Yeah, I, I, uh, it's, I it's will I will respond to that. You may have seen I had mm -hmm. some email communication with yep. Fred and the chief. Yeah. And after you know I thought about this, um, you know when I saw this and after the meeting or whatever, and I just felt one the loading and unloading zone is is just going to be a source of confusion. Myself personally, yeah. I associate that more with a business than a residential area. Number two from and you saw Chief Sullivan's response, his was they're essentially the same thing. Why do we want to go to the added expense of, of you know, having to put new signs for the side. loading and unloading? Right. So right. Um, to that point, I, I would suggest that we simply um, leave it at the 10-minute parking in that area and forget the whole loading and unloading zone. So does that mean by leaving the 10-minute parking area that we are um, uh, basically failing to enforce? No. Because other than that, you'll have no. police officers out there no. with chalk. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that at all. Well, it simply means that we're not going to introduce the confusion right. of calling something loading and unloading zones. Um, but if you say 10 minutes, then it seems to me you would mean 10 minutes. Right. And how are you going to clock the 10 minutes? That, that, I, well, that, that's, that's, that's the police department's yeah. issue. I think, yeah. as we heard, it's it's rarely a problem okay, okay. they would right. I believe what Jamie said is they would basically respond if mm -hmm. there were a complaint okay the police officer would have to basically observe for 10 minutes and then yeah. address the problem so I don't think the unloading I have a second issue on this um, if we go if we go to the um, final paragraph 
if you flip over to the, the second page in the back there, paragraph right before Section 3, effective. Mm -hmm. yeah. So everybody got that yeah. here. Um, it states, um, within the entire area, including in the Section 2, there'll be sh there shall be no parking on the west side of Route 1A that is within 20 feet of either a crosswalk or within 15 feet of a fire hydrant. And I'd like to go to one particular section that we discussed and see if you all remember it the way I do. If you look at the area that within 20 feet of a crosswalk, you may recall that the, the subject came up of, of specifically Oceanside Real Estate mm -hmm. and the area at, at the corner of, of Church Street or whatever, okay? And I recall the way the discussion went at, at that time that Skip Windemiller essentially made the point that, that if, if I lose 20 feet from that crosswalk, mm -hmm. I'm out of business. I, I looked at it on the CAI system and the frontage on Ocean Boulevard is there is only about 24 yeah. feet, right. okay? The point, Skip also made the point that Church Street does not have traffic because it's a one way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Coming out yeah. onto Ocean right. Boulevard, right. it's only in. And I don't recall Jamie Sullivan having any concerns with that. So I thought my recollection is, is, is that there was a, the way the discussion went is that we would not prohibit um, parking within 20 feet of the crosswalk at that particular yeah. location. That, isn't that crosswalk on Church Street? It's not on? No, it's on Ocean Boulevard. Is it on Ocean Boulevard? Yeah. Oh, it, that's, that it, wasn't the intention. It, 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 it's on, it, it's on Ocean Boulevard yeah. and it, it's, it's pretty much right abutting Church Street. It's, it's not actually a square intersection. It, it's right. kind of like it's a, and I saw the CI. It's yeah. about 24 feet. Mm -hmm. Then it goes at an angle or whatever and then it goes down Church Street. And it appeared to me that, that the crosswalk was pretty much right at the edge of, cr of, of, um, of, of Church Street but running across, east west across uh, That wasn't the intention. Right. So I would simply um, you know um, like to just Make that exception. Um, right. There. Except at that location. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. I agree with that. Yep. Okay. Definitely. Um, based on that, then I would make a motion to approve the traffic control ordinance um, as amended for those I'll two second. amendments. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Uh, motion passes 4 1. Uh, with I'm pardon me, an abstention. Okay. Motion passes um, 4 0 1 with Selectman mm -hmm. Dean abstaining. We'll have it revised for your signatures next week. Okay. Um, really? <laughs> <laughs> new business, trash pickup at Butternut Hollow Condominiums. Um, the only information that I saw in the box were a couple of mm -hmm. block plans or whatever. Right, so, Fred, did yeah. you wish to yeah. speak May to that? Mr. Chairman, just one last thing on the roll business. Okay. And, and it, uh, it, it speaks to uh, um, a Warren article that was passed uh, four to one by the selectmen last year. And it was uh, Article 19 this year. Last year it was, uh, two years ago it was billed as uh, an affordable housing uh, uh, Warren article. Uh, $175,000 was granted. Uh, it uh, ended up being granted to a, a luxury condominium project. Uh, and again, it was $175,000 uh, over five years. Um, elections do change boards. And I was the one person that voted against that two years ago. The new board this year, we brought it up again. There was no private petition for a Warren article. Worked with the board, uh, and this board approved that three to two. And so, if I could just call attention to that, because I think it is a unique mm -hmm. uh, phenomena where it is approved one year and then it's brought forth. And the Warren article has changed. There is nothing about affordable housing yeah. in it, and it's more true to the actual measure of the law. That is Article 19, and if you vote yes, then that will be rescinded, and that opportunity to provide tax relief will be taken away. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any other old business? Yes, I do. I know that you mentioned it. Mary Louise, you said uh, something about the ballpark lights as being taxable tax money or something? That no, the, ba the, the lighting money uh -huh. that is being proposed in the warrant article uh -huh to replace the lighting system at Eaton Park mm -hmm. is coming out of the fund that was set up for the Recreation Department. That's correct. Out of parking fees. That's correct. That's parking revenue. Fees. That is called revenue to the town of Hampton, if I'm not mistaken, parking fees. Go ahead. 
that's not going to impact the tax rate this year. Oh, that I see. So fund? if revenues do not affect the tax it, rate, no, okay. What I'm saying I'll is keep that's that in mind. Fund. Doesn't quite make it, Marilyn. She has the money in the fund to expend. However, that isn't what you said. You said that the you referred to one of the position papers in town that was absolutely incorrect. And it's not stated on that sheet of paper what you said in public. So I'd like for you to correct that, please. Okay? Because that bought the bar park lights, what it infers is exactly what we talked about on this board. It was way too much money when we got a whole set of lights that were outdoor lights from a private club in Rye or someplace like that for six or seven thousand dollars. Were they outdoor and it was lights? and it was uh, they were outdoor yes, lights. So they were indoor lights. They were mounted indoors so they've been out of the weather all this time and that was made very clear to the rec department and for people like you, because it was explained to you, okay? And I don't think there's any problem with saying that, that what you said was incorrect in relation to your comments and also those ballpark lights are way overpriced considering what you're getting. Well, I so that's how I feel about that. We're going to talk about Warren articles. Okay. Any other old business? Okay. New business. Discontinuance of trash pickup at Butternut Hollow condominiums. Fred? I guess this has uh, the largest question mark of the month. Uh, we were informed by Public Works that, that uh, we're picking up our, tr our trucks are running down this, this it's a common driveway um, for a number of um, units. And there are 14, I, I believe it's for no 16 units in this in this um, condominium, uh, and we're running down through the condominium and picking up carts at every every location, uh, recycling and trash. And the question: There's nothing in the condominium documents about uh, not being able to pick up trash there, but we wanted to call it to your attention because it was it was an anomaly in the system. Um, this is not a street; right. it's a driveway, which kind of threw us all for a little bit of a loop when we started looking at the information uh, because it's not a street. Um, they they do have their trash picked up. It's been picked up, I think, ever since the condominium was created. Uh, the question is, should we? And, and that was a question that we didn't feel we were in a position to answer and that really needed to come to the board for for whatever you felt needed to be expressed in this particular case. Um, I have a couple of comments on that. Um, in a related area, um, there was an email exchange this weekend um, with a resident of um, Ice House Lane, mm -hmm. very similar yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. situation and whatever. And and uh, I believe I, 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 I learned something and form an opinion from a process um, standpoint by going through that. If you look at the Ice House Lane trash situation or whatever, um, some time ago, my guess is it was probably December-ish or whatever, um, November, we, December, yeah. we, 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 we voted to, um, without a date certain, but we voted to discontinue trash um, at Ice House Lane mm -hmm. based on information um, that we received from the town manager that, that it was a condition of planning board approval that that, that association, which happens to consist of six units, mm -hmm. um, condition of approval that they handle their trash. Um, Fred and I had a dialogue today. It was a pretty, it's a pretty complicated sequence yes. there or whatever, but I, I do agree to, with him mm -hmm. that, that in fact it was a condition of approval. It got mm -hmm. very complicated because if you look, there are, are, are two streets or two co associations down there that are kind of next to each other, Ruben Stripway yeah. and Ice House Lane, and that they're, in, they're at the end of the Esca Road extension where, where some of the complexities are. On one level, if you look at the condo documents for Ruben Stripway, mm -hmm. okay, it's very clear, clearly explicitly stated there that trash is not handled, right. um, that, that the condominium association will handle their own trash. Right. Unfortunately, if you look at Ice House Lane, there is no explicit language in the condo documents, okay? If you then look at the plot plan that's referenced in Ice House Lane, there's nothing specific relative to trash in that plot plan, but if you look at that plot plan, it references a prior plot plan that happens to be the same plot plan as, as Ruben's Driftway that, that says, yeah. you know, that, that based on that submission of a plot plan, which was in 1995, mm -hmm. okay, but, but again, without any reference to Rubens or whatever. So 
now I'm picturing somebody com that's coming along that's considering, um, you know, purchasing one of those units and being informed, whether it's by a real estate agent or a current mm -hmm. owner or whatever, that she's the town, you know, um, takes care of the trash. And, and I'm taking at face value what was communicated in that email, at least for the moment, is accurate or whatever, that basically the trash has been picked up for 13 years, okay? Um, the trash is at one thing that did not come out when we made that vote, which is important to me, is that that trash in recycling is brought to a public road, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not, we are not going into that association. They actually wheel mm -hmm. their carts, okay, down to the end of the Esca Road um, extension, which is a public road. And am I correct in, to the best of your knowledge and all of that, yep. Fred? Okay, so to me, that's a little bit different scenario than what I thought at the time of, 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 of going on private property where it said it was a condition of approval because if you look at it, you go up and down Ocean Boulevard, there are many, many, many condos, okay, where they bring their their, their trash and their recycling curbside to, mm -hmm. to a public road. And this one outside of the the condition of approval that is buried in there is, is really no different. So then then I went from there, I said, Well geez, how do we you know, this is all complicated. I can't blame, you know, Keith or whatever for, you know, all of this kind of stuff not, you know, coming out. I mean, we have 9,000 properties in the town. And to, to what, to quite frankly, to whether it's Rubens Driftway, um, Ice House Lane, the one that's come up tonight, Butternut Hollow, or one we talked about um, a couple of weeks ago, which I think was um, 50 Acadia, yep. uh, similar. I believe that if, if we are going to consider taking away a service, in particular trash, okay, that's been provided for a number of years, okay, I believe that our decision-making process should involve notifying the property owners that are impacted and, and, and letting them know that they have an opportunity if, if they um, are concerned about that or dispute that, that we will hear what they have to say in the form of an appointment at a public meeting before making a decision. And that way, I think that would help assure that before we go through that decision-making process that we've got, you know, as much of the picture as possible. Okay. So. I want to sure. address that, if I may. This is where we get into trouble with no consistency in these things. And I was appalled when we first started talking about not picking up on private roads. And I still hold with not picking up on private roads. I think it's too big of a, uh, too big a liability exposure for the town. But this is where there's been no clear direction apparently given by boards of selectmen to the planning board. I asked for this this past year and couldn't get a vote on it. I'm going to ask for it again in the coming year. The documents uh, that the planning board issues uh, that define the details for the condominium should be specific and they should be consistent. And then you have situations, depending on the size of the condominium association, where, for example, like Dunvegan Woods, they were never told, ever, that they uh, were refused public waste collection but just the sheer volume of waste that would have to be trucked out onto High Street for not us practical. to pick up not practical. Is, no, is not practical. Right. But we're all over the board here. I know Mr. McNamara got cross at me at, at the deliberative session, that this is a situation where the planning board hasn't been focusing on it, the, pub, the board of selectmen hasn't been consistent in its direction to the planning board. We are going to be exploding at the seams with building, 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 in the town, um, the Green and Company said on the A Block building the other night that the 36 residential units will be paying to get rid of their own waste, but the uh, business units are going to be uh, having the town uh, pick up their waste. I'm tired of all this, some of this and some of that, and you do this for this one or you don't do that for that one. We've got to get consistency here, okay. and 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 it's it's. This is how we get in trouble because people are allowed to do something and it goes on for years and years and then you say, well, it's de facto, they've been doing it, so let them do it forever. And somewhere, sometime, somebody's got to put it to a stop. Okay. And I was appalled when I think Fred mentioned that with the, the deeds on some of these private roads yeah. that don't reflect the fact 
that John Doe is buying property on a private road and there might be something different about living on a private road vis-a-vis -a, -vis a public road. So somewhere somebody's going to clean some of this stuff up. We shouldn't have all these messes. Okay. I have, I have a couple of comments. Number one is I don't believe having a process where we're willing to listen right. to people that are involved yeah. Yeah. necessarily translates to inconsistency. Okay, I, I think that what that assures is that we have their perspective and have a better chance yeah. of, of understanding all the facts. It's That's not that, that process is inconsistent, yeah. Richard. It's what's been going can on I, here. Can I, can I finish? I understand. Yeah. Okay, the second thing is, is um, to your issue of, of selectmen providing direction to the planning board on this issue, we had a proposal from Keith that had to do with, I don't remember all the details with it, but had to do with, with specific levels of frontage and number of mm -hmm. carts yeah. and, and yeah. so on and so forth. What occurred there is, is that we failed <coughs> as a board to be able to reach a compromise on that, okay? And the way I, I recall that, and I'm not knocking anybody's position, but I, I think Selectman Beam was pretty much in favor of the status quo, and I think you were favor of, in favor of some very serious changes, things mm -hmm. like not picking up commercial right. trash and so on and so forth, right. and we were just unable to, to agree either on one extreme or the other of finding some middle ground in there, and I think that that's obviously something that, that um, it came up a couple of times, and, 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 and my feeling was is I wasn't going to bring it up again because we weren't getting anywhere until such time if I'm still around mm -hmm. where well, we've got mm -hmm. either the same people or a little bit different you know, on people it. on yep. the board. So I don't think this translates to, to um, inconsistency, and all I am suggesting is that, and I'm picking on all four of these because these are the four mm -hmm. that have come up late, mm -hmm. and I'm not right. talking about the snow plowing issue, I'm just yep. talking yep. about trash. the trash, trash. The trash issue, said, yeah. Is, yeah. is I believe, I don't know if it needs to be a motion or whatever, but prior to making any decision, a letter ought to go out to somebody yeah. at these four locations, yep. giving them that opportunity that if they object to that or have concerns right. to that or whatever, that, right. that they can um, make an appointment. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if we have a consensus on that, then it sounds to me like a letter ought to go out to yeah. those yes. um, four mm -hmm. um, locations. Butternut Hollow, I have no problem 50 Acadia, yeah. um, Ruben, Ruben's Ruben. Driftway, and Ice House Lane. I have no problem, but I have a, a, a concern. We've already said that condos, if they bring it to the street, it's okay. So why are we fussing about the Ice House Lane if they bring it to the Be thing? Because there is a condition of approval mm -hmm. in the Ice House Lane um, properties that says that that association mm -hmm. shall the condo documents. They're not in the condo documents. It's on the recorded it, plan. It is on, oh. and actually is a recorded plan. It, it, it's okay. it's kind. Of, to be fair, yes. the, somebody buying a place like that, you know, if if, if the car owner, the real estate agent, mm -hmm. say that the trash is being picked up, yeah. I, I don't think they've got much of a prayer of uncovering. Yeah that. I just know what I I knew it was yeah. there, and I had right. trouble digging to find trouble it. finding it. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. on page. Five of six of the condo plans. Yeah. Yeah. And what it says, item eight, is the condominium association will contract for rubbish removal. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you buy a piece of property, if it's a condominium, yeah. and it's a multi-structured condominium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you do you go to the registry of deeds yeah. and pick up all the plans that have ever been recorded on it? That's the question. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think that's a, f a fallacy we have with right. a lot of issues in town that right. we can't. The records aren't too obvious to the purchaser. That's, That's correct. correct. Okay. But the next segment, gentlemen, is where we go from here because we're dealing with stuff that happened in the past. Oh, yeah. But you're going to have more developments. And we should at least be thinking and, and about I think that what that our future I direction think Subsequent to the, the election, I think that that issue needs to be yep. raised again. Okay. Yep. We can move on. Fees for building permits. And I'll give a little bit of background um, on that one. Um, you may recall back in September when, when Kevin was in, we had discussions of the building fees, uh, building permit fees. I don't know exactly mm -hmm. how it came up, that it came out, that it yeah. had been a number of years. I don't remember the yeah. exact number, but it wasn't two or three. It was like 10 or something of, of that order of magnitude. And it was felt that that was something that, that needed to be looked at. And, and if we were going to make changes, maybe effective January 1st. We discussed it briefly last week. I think Fred <laughs> indicated that, that Kevin had looked at that. And, and he saw where Kevin had seen where his revenues um, were exceeding his expenses, that it wasn't necessary to do that. Um, I looked at that the next day, 
very quickly, and I, 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 I thought I saw what was going on, and what I saw that was going on is, is that I speculated that Kevin was, was probably looking at the revenues, and there's one line that drives that. He was looking at the expenses under the building department. Mm -hmm. That does not consider the cost of benefits, right. the cost right. of, of, of health insurance, the cost of retirement. I did some real quick numbers, and I said, you know, geez, this, this isn't a plus 25,000. It looks like a minus 60, and I don't ha have all the data that Mike Swotzer has. So I yeah. spoke with Fred, and I asked Fred to, to ask Mike, look into this and do a little right. bit of analysis or whatever and and this is essentially what we have on this second page now if if you look uh, I just make a couple of comments um, to be fair if you look at, at what Mike has come up with which if I understood it Fred is 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 an estimate of a negative hundred and forty two thousand a year that's correct okay I think to be fair this is, is, is based on, on average revenues over the past five years. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, you go back five years, you're going back like 2009 and 2010, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's quite this bad, okay? I just did some, some quick calculations, and I said, geez, I think the last two years, 2012, 2013, right. is probably more indicative of what we might see going forward. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I think it, it's probably closer to a minus 100,000, but it, 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 it's still... Um, you know, a, a minus number. Philosophically, I think it's 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 reasonable to try and strive. This is not about perfection, but to try and strive within the building department that the revenues coming in pretty much, mm -hmm. you know, offset the real costs right. of running that department. And the benefits are a real cost. We have, I think, yeah. three employees that have got health insurance, and then the NHRS and the Social Security, whatever. Um, I also did, and this, this literally took me about 10 minutes, but I said, geez, we're, and the, I'll give you the simple version, but we're basically charging $5 per thousand yeah. or whatever. Right. So, so if you have a, mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever, if you, if you have um, a million dollar um, structure, then that's, um, what, that's, that's 1,000 um, times five, so what's, what's that? Uh, $5,000 or, or, or whatever. I looked at Rye, I looked at Portsmouth, and I looked at Seabrook. Um, see, we're charging $5 per thousand. Seabrook is charging $6 per thousand, which is 20% more. Portsmouth is charging $7 per thousand, which is 40% more. Rye is charging 1% of the price, which is essentially $10 um, mm -hmm. per thousand. Um, so I think from the standpoint of what it's costing us in relation to revenues as well as comparatives, I think it's, it's something that is worth looking into. Mm -hmm. in my suggestion, nothing to make a motion to tonight, but we asked Fred to mm -hmm. get back with Kevin and, nope. and take a look at that and come back to the board within yeah. several weeks or whatever. Okay. With the idea and in mind that probably $6 per thousand might be a, a goal? Uh, I would, that would just I would about see set our, cover our cost. I would suggest that it would take to take seven dollars, okay, um, but they can figure this out. They've okay. got some work to do. Yeah. But I would suggest that it would take seven dollars. The other thing that I would suggest is you don't want to be. This is an area um, you don't want to be the most expensive town around. Right. Right. You don't want to be the least mm -hmm. expensive town around. But I think if you're a little bit higher than average and you're covering your costs at the time you make the change, that's reasonable because you're probably not going to change it again for another five years, years or whatever. whatever. You're not yeah. going to be changing yeah. this every year. It would be too confusing. Right. Right. But if you use a percentage, you may not have to change it at all if you fix on a percent. Please. And the percent will carry forward. Well, the percent of the building yeah. cost. One percent, two percent. That's the same as, it's, it's the same as, as five dollars per thousand. I mean, it, it, eight dollars per thousand are percent of the same. Five yeah. percent is the same as five dollars. The, the ratio is the same. Yeah. And an interesting perspective, any, any uh, recommendations <laughs> from uh, the town manager would be a, a graduated scale, so us poor people, um, there's, there's a scale. Yeah. yeah. You pay so much. We have to look at the variables. 50, right. if, yeah. Good. Where if you live in Mr. Nichols' neighborhood with the million dollar homes. There you go. That's a premium. Not at the ocean. But would, would you like, <laughs> I have one for sale if you want to spend a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps so. <laughs> I, think, I think all we, we're looking for is a consensus to ask yes, Fred and yes, Kevin to look absolutely. into it. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, okay. Good idea. Okay. Will do. Um, have a couple, any other new business? 
Okay. Entertainment license is under review. This is just back to our process where mm -hmm. we put it out there for a week for the benefit of the public. One is Savory Square Bistro, 32 Depot Square. The other is Logan's Run at 816 Lafayette Road. Um, consent agenda. On the consent agenda, we have a number of veterans requalifications. Um, this is a long-term project that the um, assessing department is, is doing some catch-up on going back to 2008. And some new, second item is some new elderly tax exemption applications. Um, the third is another requalification of the veterans tax credit and el elderly exemption. And the final one is essentially another extension for the Hampton Arts Network to be able to use the town offices for displaying art. I'll move so, the oh, I'll second Mike. Okay. I'll move the consent agenda. Okay, a motion is made by yes, Selectman Pierce, seconded by Selectman Woolsey. All in favor? Are you in favor? Unanimous. Uh, any closing comments? Yes, I think it's time to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to go into a non-public meeting under RSA 91A colon 3, Roman numeral 2, small a and small c, roll call vote required. All in favor? Unanimous. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second, second that. At 8.48. Uh, that's a little fast, but that's second okay. Second by Selectman Woolsey. All in favor? Unanimous. Public meeting is adjourned. Fred, how do you...